The fast attack submarine USS Scorpion was launched in December of 1959 and put into service the following year. She would become one of only two nuclear submarines to be lost by the U.S. Navy. Debate has long raged over the cause of her sinking. On Monday, May 27, 1968 families gathered at a pier side in Norfolk, Virginia to welcome the USS Scorpion and her crew back to their home port. When Scorpion failed to arrive on time, it soon became apparent that something had gone terribly wrong. The Navy initiated an air and sea search along Scorpion's expected course. The nuclear attack submarine, USS Scorpion, SSN 589, has been reported overdue at Norfolk, and now units of the Atlantic Fleet have begun a search by submarine, surface ships, and aircraft. Okay, the submarine, you know, the Scorpion, uh, any signs at all, anything is seen in the water, debris, dye markers, uh, anything you can see in the water that would give indication that, that something is there, and give us a call on ICS immediately. Uh, Howard, have your smokes ready. Uh, have the retro ready to go. Stay there as long as you think you can see something. Make sure you get a relief before you leave. The search was called off when no trace of Scorpion was found. Scorpion and her crew of 99 men were declared lost. Now scientists, oceanographers and underwater sound experts went to work trying to locate the wreck site. An examination of acoustic records showed that Scorpion imploded at 18.42 GMT time, Wednesday, May 22. The sounds of her hull imploding were recorded by multiple hydrophones placed around the Atlantic Ocean. Using the arrival times of the implosion sounds at different locations it was possible to calculate Scorpion's approximate location. This location was 400 nautical miles southwest of the Azores in water 10,000 feet deep. The U.S. Navy sent the research ship USS Mizar to pinpoint and investigate the wreckage. Mizar used a towed underwater sled equipped with lights, cameras and sonar to find and photograph the wreck. The implosion had left Scorpion in two major pieces. The forward section containing the torpedo room and the stern section containing the reactor and propulsion systems. The force of the implosion was great enough to telescope Scorpion's stern forward into the hull. The sail lay off by itself and the center section of the submarine containing the control room had been completely obliterated. The following year, the submersible Trieste II was used to closely examine the wreck and even retrieve some pieces of debris from the seafloor. No obvious explanation for the loss of Scorpion could be found. The video shown here was filmed in 1986 when the U.S. Navy revisited the Scorpion wreck site. A number of theories have been proposed to explain the loss of Scorpion. Most theories are based on technical arguments while a few are based on conspiracies. Enemy action is a long-lasting conspiracy theory that has been the subject of many articles and books. Proponents of this theory claim that an attack by the Soviet Navy led to Scorpion's sinking. If this were true then not a single person on either side has come forward to confirm it. This would include people in both navies and all of the scientists and engineers who worked on the investigation. Moreover, an intentional sinking by the Soviet Navy would risk starting an all-out war. Something both sides wanted to avoid. It is highly unlikely that Scorpion was lost due to enemy action. Two of the most popular theories blame Scorpion's torpedoes for her loss. In one such theory, a faulty torpedo battery started a fire which led to the detonation of a torpedo warhead while still inside the submarine. Had this happened, the other torpedo warheads would have detonated as well, leaving the forward section far more damaged than it is. A similar theory outlines a scenario where a torpedo was accidentally started while still inside the submarine. In this scenario, Scorpion's captain would have ordered a 180-degree turn in order to activate a safety feature in the torpedo that would render it harmless. Once the turn was completed, the torpedo was fired. However, despite the 180-degree turn, the torpedo remained fully armed. The armed torpedo then homed in on Scorpion and sunk her. Proponents of this theory claim that the acoustic data collected by hydrophones show Scorpion was heading 180 degrees opposite of her expected course just prior to her sinking.
Recent analysis shows that Scorpion did not make such a turn. Moreover, there is no evidence in the wreckage to indicate an external explosion. There are a few other technically plausible theories for the loss of Scorpion. These include a failure of the propeller shaft and a malfunctioning trash disposal unit. In both of these scenarios, Scorpion would have experienced massive flooding. A flooded submarine would not implode and it is obvious from the wreck that Scorpion imploded. One theory has come back to the forefront after being ignored for decades. That theory involves an explosion in Scorpion's battery well. In 1970, the structural analysis group set up as part of the investigation concluded that the most likely cause of Scorpion's sinking was the explosion of hydrogen given off by her battery. The group based their conclusion on a careful examination of fragments of Scorpion's battery recovered from the wreck site by Trieste II. Nuclear submarines have batteries as a backup power source in the event of a reactor emergency. These batteries can give off hydrogen while being charged. The structural analysis group theorized that hydrogen was produced while Scorpion was charging her batteries. Only a single spark from static electricity would be needed to set off the volatile gas. Such a spark may have been inadvertently created by a crewman entering the battery well. The structural analysis group's report gives detailed evidence that at least some of Scorpion's battery cells exploded. Their report states the following. Quote, the available evidence indicates the battery probably exploded at some time before flooding of the battery well occurred. The threads on the terminal posts were sheared off and there are no cover seal nuts remaining. The covers were completely blown off. Had the pressure been applied on the outside of the covers, the cover support flange on the terminal posts would have held pieces of the cover and it is expected that the cover seal nuts would have remained in place in at least some instances. End quote. Melting was also observed on the salvaged battery cover. It is unlikely that this would have occurred due to the implosion. It is more likely that the cover was exposed to high heat prior to any flooding. A hydrogen explosion in Scorpion's battery well would cause an overpressure of 150 to 200 psi. This is three to four times the lethal value of 50 psi. Such an explosion would not have been powerful enough to breach the hull but would have turned Scorpion into a ghost ship. With no one to control her heading or depth, a slight negative buoyancy or down angle on the diving planes would eventually cause Scorpion to drift below her crush depth and implode. Further proof of the battery explosion theory was found by former lead acoustic analyst for the Office of Naval Intelligence, Bruce Rule. Rule reanalyzed all of the available acoustic data and found two small explosive events that occurred 21 minutes 50 seconds prior to Scorpion's implosion. Each of these explosions was equivalent to the detonation of up to 20 pounds of TNT. Rule put forth a detailed scientific argument explaining that these sounds came from Scorpion. Such explosions would not be powerful enough to breach the hull but would likely kill the entire crew. The size and effects of these two events match those of the hydrogen explosion theorized by the structural analysis group. Combining the new acoustic analysis with the work done by the structural analysis group, it is now possible to reconstruct a probable timeline of events leading up to the loss of Scorpion. At 1800 hours GMT time on May 22, 1968, Scorpion was 400 miles southwest of the Azores on course for her home port of Norfolk, Virginia. The submarine's battery was being charged. Unknown to the crew, a dangerous amount of hydrogen was being produced and filling the battery well. At 1820 hours GMT time the hydrogen ignited possibly due to an electrostatic discharge or some other source. The resulting blast caused an instantaneous rise in pressure powerful enough to kill the entire crew. With no one left to control the submarine's depth, Scorpion slowly sank to her crush depth over the following 21 minutes 50 seconds finally imploding at 1842 hours GMT time. Submarines do not carry the equivalent of an airliner's black box so there is no recording of the events that transpired when accidents occur. Usually, there is only an acoustic recording and fragmented wreckage of the submarine at a depth that makes investigation difficult. It is usually only possible to list a few scenarios as the cause of the submarine's loss. The hydrogen explosion scenario best fits the available acoustic and physical evidence and offers a plausible if not probable explanation for the loss of the USS Scorpion.
As always, it is important to keep an open mind in the event that new evidence is uncovered and a new scenario becomes more likely. Technical descriptions and data on the two acoustic precursor events can be found in the book, Why the USS Scorpion, SSN 589, was lost, by Bruce Rule. The book also includes a discussion of Scorpion's course and the events associated with her sinking. More video, including a 4K upscale, from the 1986 investigation of the wreck can be found on YouTube.